host Kedrick from the Wheelhouse. Today we coming with a Wheelhouse special. Y'all know we talk heavy about the spirit, but today we talking about the physical man. And I'm bringing in a guest. Really, he's not a guest to me. <laughs> Been knowing him my whole life. And I'm bringing to him. He got years of experience, and he also living this out in real time. Welcome to the Wheelhouse. My uncle, Patrick, what's good, man? Hey, what's going on, nephew? How you doing, man? Oh, man, I'm good, man. All right, all right. Yeah, um, if you would, yeah. give the people a quick bio of yourself, man, and, so, and let them know what you do, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and how you work it out daily. Okay. Well, as he said, you know, I'm his uncle for real. You know, his mom <laughs> is my sister. This is real right, deal. So I've been doing this uh, over 30 years. You know, last 10, 11 years, I've been a certified personal trainer. Got that certification down in Houston. Um, this is something that uh, I'm passionate about. This is my life. Um, I've been, like I said, 30 years of experience in this thing, uh, working out. I try to help people now. The last 10, 11 years, I've been trained, trying to help people turn their life over, turn it around, you know, get off that fast food, get some of that good whole cooking, you know, that home cooking. And, but um, this is my passion. I feel passionate about this. I love helping people. And that's the main thing when you're a personal trainer. But I've um, never been an athlete. Um, I never could outrun my nephew, by the way. This guy's <laughs> super fast. <laughs> he taught me a lesson or two about that running. So uh, never been an athlete. Always been physical fit most of my life. But as years have gone, and I've, I've gradually, you know, gotten older and more mature in this thing. I've learned a lot more, understood more about my body. And that's what I'm trying to tell a lot of older clients and teaching people that are getting in their latter years that it's never too late to turn that thing around. So basically, that's what I do. I'm a personal trainer. I'm an old school personal trainer. Uh, and I love helping people, you know. That's just, that's pretty much my story. Yeah, and yeah, uh, we, we're about to get into it. But, you know, I got I got to come with the scripture first. Yes. Ephesians five twenty nine says, "Indeed, no, no one ever hated his own body, but he has nourished, nourishes, and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church." And that leads me into my first topic: sleep, eat, and live. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll be discussing today. Uh, we we gonna get your expertise on some of these topics. <laughs> we, the first expertise is the importance of sleep and being intentional about it. Yeah, you. I believe uh, if you if you have if you're blessed with a job that allows you to set your your day to day sleep hours, I would say if you can get with kids involved and everything, home life seven to eight hours of sleep. Now the body needs that rest in order to grow. Now a lot of people may argue that, but <laughs> I am a firm believer. If there all those little aches and pains and that inflammation in your body and joints. The only yeah. way you can get that out, don't believe what they're selling you in a bottle. You keep taking it. Um, eventually, you'll come to a point, you're going to hit a wall, and you're going to have to get some rest. So the best thing I would say, seven to eight hours on average just to get yourself recovered enough to get back in it. You know what I'm saying? So rest is very important. And also, if you set up a workout routine right now, what I've been doing for the last couple of years is I work out three weeks straight. And I take a whole week off. Now, sometimes that's active rest, meaning walking and stuff. But I kind of give my body time to recover because I do a lot of strength training. Uh, I've gotten older and I'm just still trying to hang on to the muscle and everything. But um, uh, three weeks on, plenty of rest in between, as much as you can get. If you got kids, I do understand. If your job is, you know, swing schedule, I do understand. But try to get that eight to seven hours of rest. That's definitely going to help you out in the long run with this fitness. Yeah, and what's funny, I got I was I, I talk to people all the time about it, and I I told my wife this, and I'm gonna put it up on the screen. Past generations went to bed; the new generation fall asleep. That's it's, right. It's it's a difference. It's it's a difference in falling asleep <laughs> and going to bed. That's right. That's right. They got they set hours. Yeah, set yeah. hours on going to sleep. That newer generation, they just until they <laughs> drop. You know, they out of there. So. They're old school. My grandmother, man, I remember my yeah. uh, my dad's mom and my and my and my uh, my grandfather. They would go to bed eight nine o'clock together, and that was it. You know, every night that's what their schedule was. You know, so you definitely right on that, nephew. The oh, the generation before us, they they went to bed. This one here, they just fall out when it's can't do no more. 
T- TV on and everything. <laughs> everything, yeah. That's right. Food sitting out, don't matter. Just fall out. Yeah, it's like even my uh, my mom and dad they do that. Like, oh yeah. If I call if I call my mom at like at nine o'clock, I might as well just hang it up. Like hey, I already <laughs> know. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Your your mom is definitely she's an early riser though, and that's what yeah, you should I know. be. Yeah, exactly. very early riser. Yeah. I, I told I told her that uh, she be waiting on the chickens. <laughs> for real, <laughs> waiting on them to crow. Yeah, for real. She gets up early, man. Yeah, she, early. Uh, she's my alarm clock for sure. <laughs> and I get up early, so she's my alarm clock. Yeah. With, and that leads us to our next topic: the right food slash fuel for the engine to get the best performance. Man, this one, this one right here, man. This is. Uh, I don't know how to stress this enough, man. This is a game changer, man. This is uh, this is your this is your lifeline right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, if you're not putting the proper food in the, in this vessel, then uh-huh. you can't expect to get what you really want out of it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You have to fuel this this properly, this body properly, man. And I'm gonna tell you the truth, man. Uh, uh, I've been blessed to have a wife. That supports this, and this is the yeah. only reason why they get this uncut right here because <laughs> my wife is on board 100%. I say that because I meal prep. Meal yeah, yeah. prep has been a game tra- changer for me. I tried every diet out there. I don't want to knock any diet. I've tried the keto, the, the South Beach, the Atkins, all that low carbon and everything, and and it'll take you so far. But when yeah. you find something that works, and which could involve a piece from here, from here, from here but it works for your body and your lifestyle, Yeah. then you go with that. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to put a name on it or a label on it or whatever at that time, but find something that works for you. Meal prep is a, is a, is a game changer for me because I don't have to think about it. All my meals are back here in the office in my refrigerator right now. I'll yeah. take one out, put it in the uh, microwave. Now, Sunday is usually my prep day. But once you figure out what works for you, I would suggest, you know, then you get off into your macros, your fats, your carbs, and your protein but don't just jump into something with you know low carb intention because you don't even know how that affects your body yeah yeah yeah. so you got you gotta you gotta do some trial and error on a lot of these diets to find something that works and something doesn't work you know because some of this stuff will put you down you know but that's this is a lot that food in general is your lifeline you have to have proper nutrition in order to perform properly and get the results you really want that's the bottom line so, so let's say somebody may be watching they, and they might ask, like, like, where do I start or how do I start the meal prep plan? I would always tell somebody you know, to start. First, yeah. find out what's your daily intake. Any, okay, let's say you come to me and you're overweight. And you tell me, man, I've been cutting out calories, cutting out calories. Well, you're starving yourself. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> your body won't allow you to lose weight. It won't go into starvation mode. If they lock you in a in a cage, you will yeah. starve. But yeah, you yeah. in general, you can't starve yourself. So I would tell you to increase your calories to your daily intake. People don't understand the importance of that. So if your daily intake is seventeen hundred calories, your daily intake is twenty four hundred calories. If you can map out a plan that gets you close to that on a daily basis, your mm-hmm. body will start to release its stores. Because therefore, it would see that you're eating enough calories on a daily basis to um, live that life, to, yeah. to do all the activities you need to do. But if you're not doing that, your body will store body fat because it said he ain't eating enough, and he's going to yeah. try to starve us out. It's not going to yeah. happen. <laughs> so the first place to start is find out what your calorie intake. Now, I don't have those numbers right now, but there's a lot of, um, um, I guess, what, calculators that are online. If you look that up. You can find it that will give you your daily, based on your activity level. And that's the reason why I don't have it, because I don't know everybody's activity level. Yeah, yeah. Based on your activity level, what calories you should be taking in. Once you start there, don't worry about, I would say, worry about the quality versus the quantity of the food you start taking in that leads up to that number. Because a lot of times people want to go find that number, go, uh, well, I don't want to take in this much carbs. and that. Don't do that. Just yeah. find that number, 
start eating close to that number. You're going to be surprised on how much food that is because you automatically going to think you're not burning. I don't need, I don't need to eat that much, but yes, your body needs that in order to flush out some of that body fat. And you know, all it's all around the waist. You can get rid of all that. It'll drop off. Like it just fall off like clothes and yeah, you yeah. start eating close to that number. And that's something that I learned because I felt like, um, eating less, which everybody does yeah. eating less, meaning more gains. So I eat yeah. less. I'm going to lose more. You can't starve your body out. It's, it's almost impossible feat. Like I said, somebody can starve you, but you can't starve yourself. Yeah. So that, that's be the first step. First step, finding your um, daily um, calorie intake. That, that's, that, that shows you, like, how intelligently we our body, <laughs> we were made yes. and our bodies are, you know, mm-hmm. to, know how, to know that I'm, I'm going to store this fat because I know he's going to halfway try to kill me. <laughs> by exactly. <not> eating. <laughs> exactly. The body knows it will not. You can think it. You can think you're gonna be able to do it, but it'll yeah. shut you down. Hold on to that body fat, and yeah. uh, a lot of times people get results by trying that method the first week. But when the body catches on, yeah, all that next week it'll make you gain that plus back the next week, <laughs> messing around. So, you know, the body you can't. You gotta go. You gotta give the body enough fuel. The body will say, well. If he's eating more protein, when you get into your macros, when you eat more protein and he's doing strength training, so let's feed that muscle. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? Let's reduce that body fat. Let's feed that muscle. So the body is highly intelligent. So yeah. So 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 our body's kind of like a bear before hibernation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if we're not feeding it. If we if we trying to starve it, you know. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it'll put you down, put you to sleep with everything you have, and you'll wake <laughs> up. You know, if you sleep that long, you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. but yeah. Definitely, uh, yeah, you can't starve it out, but start there and keep it moving. Yeah. So, so, so what I'm gleaning from it is, 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 is one, you have to be intentional about this thing at first. Like, like yeah. I'm going to make a concerted eff- effort to meal prep. That's right. Then begin, then, then start the process of beginning the meal prep. Mm-hmm. And then you, and then during that process, you can find out what to take away, what to add. By yeah, exactly. More information Along, and knowledge about your body. You know what to take away, what to add. Along the way, once you get started, once you say, well, hey, I need 2,400 calories. Yeah. So I'm going to start eating. I'm going to say if I had a I out calculate. Say there's one called My Fitness Pal. Say if I get on My Fitness Pal, I put some information in. Disregard uh-huh. what they tell you you need to take in. Yeah. Go by the number you found. Because this is this is how that app works. I know this firsthand. Go by what you the number you found for yourself. Plug that in. Just based all the food. That's gonna help you keep up with your food. But hey, if you like a log, if you like to write a little bit, and yeah. you know the calorie intake and all that, then you'll be fine until you get into the macros. Then you're gonna need a little bit more technology to keep up with the macros. But once you find that, and you start eating according to those numbers based on your meal prep. Because a lot of people can't meal prep. A lot of people can't eat the same thing over and over and over and over. I've been blessed with a, you know, a cutoff switch. I just see it as fuel. But yeah. a lot of people cannot do that, and I understand. But I really believe that they would get further and they would gain get more gains if they kept up with their daily intake with some form of log. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's always going to be the best advice. Keep a log. Keep a log. Just, yeah. That's leading to the last topic of the day. Living a disciplined lifestyle that's conducive for the maximum results. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> very disciplined man. There's uh, there's no such thing as a uh, cheat day. Yeah, there are some meals that you indulge in, you know, um, and then there's some you replace. Um, I love donuts, yeah, but I hadn't had a donut in two or three years. You see, what I'm saying the love is not gone anywhere, but I've replaced that. Yeah, you know, because it doesn't do my body good. You know, so what you, you know the mind. This is how the the mind. If mm-hmm. you start telling yourself you can't have something, yeah. it'll do more damage than saying I'm not going to eat it right now. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things. Even Roman noodles. Yeah, I love some noodles, but if I put that <laughs> sauce in there, I start right. hanging on to that water and bloating. I don't like that look. I don't like that feeling. So I don't eat them. I'm not eating them right now. Yeah, but I still love to eat them. Yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> that. yeah. So that that right there, that disciplined lifestyle, and once again, man, I gotta give it up, you know, for my wife because 
this this level of madness and meal prep that I do goes on for uh, 52, 50 weeks out of the year. And she uh-huh. puts up with this. So I'm very blessed that she goes along with this madness that I've, I've been in for a while. <laughs> and uh, that that helps, that fuels my disciplined life, you know, dress right dress and, you know, OCD about certain things when it comes down to putting stuff in my body. I won't put certain things in my body. I'm very particular about what I put in my body. And that's the discipline as well. You know, a lot of times people say, well, they had a wedding and there was cake there, man. And I'm supposed to figure it out from there. Well, did yeah. somebody force feed you cake? <laughs> no, you made a decision. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Or I went to, a, I went to, I took the kids out, man. And all they had was pizza. Did somebody oh, force feed you pizza? I'm yeah, sure I they had that. salad. Yeah. Salad, yeah. Was it close? yeah. So, it's, that's the discipline thing. When you start making the decisions to put to on what goes in your body, uh-huh. then you know your discipline is forming and it's and it's gonna turn out uh, better than just saying, Oh man, they didn't have anything but but um donuts and uh ice cream, so you know, I, I had to eat, you know. You know. Also also speaking of dis uh, um um discipline, uh-huh. I believe everybody should try a three day fast, man. That's the spiritual yeah, awakening, yeah. man. Now, yeah. a three day fast, man, and just water. Your body can go, but this will open you. I'm talking about mental clarity like you've never yeah. had before in your life. But yeah. it'll it'll put food in perspective. You know, three days without it with just water and still living, and your hunger goes away after day two. Yeah. Day three, you kind of take your time eating, man. But it's a spiritual awakening, man. I mean, yeah. it's, there's nothing like it. I've done several in my time, and um, you know, I'm gearing up for a seven day because. Uh, that's clear. I mean, you get things done. The clarity yeah. that's involved is, is it's amazing, man. Yeah, because I I've I've done a, uh, like a week. That's the longest I ever went was a week. Mm-hmm. And like you yeah. say, the, the clarity of my and and when when you start back to eat, like when you introduce food back to your body, yeah, you you very careful on like what I want to eat. Exactly. Like eat, exactly. you might eat something like let's say you go back to something that like greasy or something like that. Mm-hmm. The taste of it is disgusting. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, because it's, it's you fresh palate. Everything is fresh, man. <laughs> and a lot of people think that if you tell them you're doing a three day fast, um, they think you're starving. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, they've never gone that long without food, and they can't mm-hmm. imagine. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But this is this is old school. This is Old Testament here. You know, oh, you're supposed yeah. to fast with a, with a good sort of smile on your face and, and never <laughs> let nobody see you down. You know, yeah. that's how you're supposed to fast, and yeah. that's how I am about my fast. You will never know I'm fasting if it's three days or what. I, yeah. If it's on my last my last day of that last hour, you won't know it because mm-hmm. my yeah. face will never change. So that's old school. So yeah, yeah it's <laughs> very spiritual, man, and I I enjoy doing that. But that that's a that's a discipline. If somebody started doing that, yeah, it'll change their life, man. Twenty, even a twenty-four hour fast is is, yep. is amazing as well. So, Cause I know one of one of my buddies here. We, I, I we we done fast together, and he want to start like we was talking about starting like every Monday, like fasting every every Monday, like for let's say the month of uh, July. Then mm-hmm. in August, we fast like that that twenty-four hours every Monday to kick out oh, the yeah. week. And kind of get that, you know, kind of kick the week off, and then fall into eating health, uh, healthy, making healthier choices during the week, and then fall oh, yeah. back fast. It'll, it'll, man, you'll get your production will go up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Your clarity will mm. grow, grow up, man. Your, your, your body will start to change because that's, it's nothing. There's nothing like it. There's nothing they can market that can replace fasting, and that's just what it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, I definitely enjoy that. But yeah, uh, it's been it's been lovely having you in the wheelhouse. I'm I'm, I'm, oh, gonna, leave, sure. I'm gonna leave with two with two uh things I came up with before we got on here. One is deposit a healthy lifestyle and cash out a healthy results. <laughs> there it is. And then the last one is pull the plug on I can't and plug into I can. That's right. Yeah, that's solid right there, nephew. Yeah. Oh yeah. And until next time, the wheelhouse. <laughs>